Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to Lunchtime Live with Lady Doctor. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Asan. How are you? Tiffany. Hello on Periscope. Hello on Instagram. Good afternoon. Welcome to Lunchtime Live with Lady Doctor. Josh, what's up, Big Josh? I enjoyed you yesterday. Paulette, Tracy, hi, hi, hi. Hey, Mary Ray, Montrese, good afternoon. Welcome to Lunchtime Live with Lady Doctor. Again, I'm having issues with my music. I don't know what's going on. I thought I resolved the problem. As a matter of fact, I did resolve the problem, but it has uh, reoccurred at 1 o'clock, in incidentally. But we have a lot to talk about today, so I am not going to stress myself about my music. Um, but uh, next week we'll have some music. Thank you guys for joining a Lunchtime Live with Lady Doctor. I see you, Lady D. I see you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Carolyn, good to see you. She is on a cruise right now. Tuning in live from the cruise ship. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Tanya Tucker, good to see you. I owe you a date. God bless you. Tamika, good to see you. Kiara, Auntie Reese, hey girl. Hey everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's get some housekeeping in the way and some announcements real quick and then we'll get to talking. But before I start with my announcements, I want you to prepare one question now i'm throwing myself out there one question that you would like for me to try to answer today prepare one question that you would like for me to try to answer today i don't want you to post it right this second because then it's going to disappear so just prepare one question that you would like for me to try to answer today. And there's a reason for that, okay? So, uh, as you all know, I'm sure you know, and if you don't know, you're finna know right now. Um, thank you, this mug was a gift from um, Pastor Mary Walker. It's very beautiful, I love it, and I will tell her you love it too. So, this weekend, this weekend starts the Winter Weekend Women's Conference 2020. And uh, I'm really excited. This is a work week for us at Full Effect. We work really, really hard toward the WWWC. It's a really um, big event at our church and for the ministry. But this year, we are um, collectively sponsoring with my new ministry and my new babies, Healing Truth Women's Ministry. So um, it will be Healing Truth Women's Ministry and Full Effect Gospel Ministries. Women are combined to make the WWWC20 a memorable um, event. We will not waste your time. You will have a wonderful, wonderful program. Um, my mother, again, is trying to get on Facebook. Sister Denise will you please tag your mom in share this with mother mary johnson so she can get on she's texting me in the middle of my life again so if you can just share as a matter of fact if you all would just share it with a couple of your friends that will be a blessing to me um i just want to say before i go into everything Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Um, Lunchtime Live with Lady Doctor is becoming a household word. Um, you guys are looking forward to being here with me. I look forward to being with you. I kind of just washed my hair and threw some gel in the front today because I didn't want to miss um, our live session. This is a work week for us, a serious work week. This is the week that we finalize all of the registrations, we start getting our packages together, we start preparing the sanctuary and re, um, 
organizing our daycare center because we need to use some of the space for the conference and so and we start preparing the food it's a lot going on for you this weekend so we do really want you to know that we don't just give you a potluck special we work really hard to make sure that the wwwc is um, a phenomenal experience and some of you um ask me about doing conferences and you want to do conferences in your ministry and I believe in doing everything as cost effectively as I can because I'm a good steward over the Lord's finances and over your finances. If you trust me, I will not squander uh, your registration fees. I will not squander your donations. So a little maconomics. <laughs> <laughs> Maconomics means this is how the McInneses do events and make them successful without um, going over our budget and trying to um, exceed that which we are financially viable for. So we want to make sure that we do things in decency and in order. We don't cut back. We don't, um, we're not cheap. We're not tight, but we are fiscal, uh, uh, fiscally viable. We want to make sure that the monies are spent properly and that they're used for kingdom building. Um, you know us by now. You should trust us by now. We are not squanderers. So your donations, your support, your registration, your help means a great deal to this conference, and this conference means a great deal to our ministry, and our ministry means a great deal to the world. You got it? So, thank you. Hi, Mom. Hi, Shamel. Hi, everyone. Listen, so I need to, I'm going to run that back by you. Your donations, your support, your registrations, your help means a great deal to the conference. The conference means a great deal to Full Effect Churches. And Full Effect Churches means a great deal to the world. We are um, on a kingdom mission to do the Lord's bidding. And that's what we intend to do. And that's what we've been doing for 22 years. So thank you again, everyone who registered, everyone who sent your support, everyone who sent um, money, everyone who intends to show up for one of or more of the services. Thank you. That's the Winter Weekend Women's Conference 2020. Um, we have, my glasses are giving me a little trouble today. We have uh, our last ditch effort for fundraising tomorrow night. It is our pre-WWWC and it is our final fundraiser toward the conference. So anyone in Brooklyn, Anyone near Brooklyn, if you can get to Brooklyn tomorrow night at 7.30, from 7.30 to 9.30, we will have our pre-Winter Weekend Women's Conference. And Bishop Darrell K. Dove Sr. is the preacher for tomorrow evening. He has been our pre-WWWC speaker for many, many years. And as long as there's a February, he has a standing engagement with us because he and his family and his ministry have been more than fellowships to us, their friends. And and um, they're going to kick it off for us tonight with Unhinged, and it will be a phenomenal experience. Those of you who want to pledge your support to the conference, you can do so by sending a cash app to BALM2, B-A-L-M-2, or to Healing Truth, um, W C. No, not W C. Healing Truth W M Women's Ministry. Just send it to Balm to B A L M to it'll go in the right place. That is to support the Winter Weekend Women's Conference in any way. Any bit any um support is appreciated. Now at eleven o'clock, remember those of you who are just getting on, prepare one question that you 
want me to try to answer for you today. Prepare it. Don't put it up here now. Just about five more seconds. And then I'm going to ask you to start putting up your questions. Don't throw them all up here at one time. Give me a chance to answer or hold on. I don't have an assistant today who can write them down and keep them. So if I ask you to run it back, just cut and paste it and send it again. But prepare one question. That's Periscope. That's um, Instagram and Facebook. One question that you would like for me to try to answer for you. It has to be something relevant, something that's going to help you, something that's going to make a difference, not just, you know, who does your hair? Me, gel, does my hair. <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, let's, get, let's get ready for the Winter Weekend Women's Conference, and let's um, prepare for tomorrow night. That's our final fundraiser toward the, the conference, and what, whatever we need to get after tomorrow, we got to get with that. So let's be a blessing. Now, one other thing. You guys hear me talk about my husband all the time. You hear me talk about Bishop McInnes. Some things are hilariously funny. He's a very, very funny guy. You wouldn't know by looking. You probably wouldn't even know that he could even talk in a public setting. You can see him in a crowd of, of dignitaries, and he probably won't say one word. But when he's around his comfort zone, he is hilarious. Most of his jokes are on me, and I'm good with it. <laughs> Half the time he's saying jokes about me, he doesn't even know it's funny. It's just the way he thinks. But I just wanted to share uh, just one thing with you about him. Bishop McInnes is a man of integrity. He is a man of keen integrity, and he has a good name in the city. As far as I know, I haven't heard any negativity about him, and he is an honest man, and he's a holy man. This is from his wife. Now, I know sometimes you can always tell what's really happening at home if you keep your eyes on the First Lady, unless she's very skilled at what she does. But for the most part... And she looked like this while he preaching. She like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, Bishop McInnes doesn't have that testimony. I don't have that testimony about him. He lives the life that he preaches about uh, in front of me and in front of our children. Of course, we have difficult days like any marriage, but he's a man of holiness and a man of integrity. I'm saying this because um, some of you have never been to any of the Full Effect churches. You've never been to our Brooklyn church, um, but you should come. You should come and visit every now and then or pop in one Sunday, especially those of you who might be unchurched or searching for a church. Now, we don't advertise. You never heard me do this before. I don't go around here asking people to join our church. But I do want those of you who might be um, in limbo and not sure what happens next in your spiritual life to try uh, Full Effect Church. Uh, come and listen to the man of God and see if the messages that he ministers uh, will give you direction. It's sad to be just aimlessly lingering around in uh, in limbo, trying to figure out where you belong. And, and I feel for you. In my spirit, I feel for you. And so I want you to seek the face of God, pray about it, and see if God uh, wants you to come. And at least you don't have to, like, come and join, but come and get a word for your life and see if the word of God that comes out of the mouth of the man of God will be enough to get you going at least toward your destiny. That's my uh, request for you because Bishop McKinnis is a great, great man, and I believe that um, he's destined for even greater things, and, and it will be soon, so um, you might want to jump in on now. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen who are on the line today, I'm going to ask you to post that one question that you want me to try to answer today. It's not that I uh, came to my live unprepared, but I feel led of the Lord to hear from you. So I want to hear from you. I want to know what are the things that concern you? What? Why are you even on this live? Why do you even uh, take the time out to join uh, a particular live, I, anything like that. I, I just want to hear from you. 
Hey, Marilyn from the Church of the Open Door. Yes, Lord, we have a wonderful fellowship with the Church of the Open Door. They also are like family to us. Thank you for being on my live today. Um, somebody um, sent a request to be on my live. I don't even know how to do that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But if you can post a comment, I don't know if I can see it. I'm sorry. Um, Instagram, I'm not that good with that. But if you have a question, if you have a comment that you would like for me to delve into just for the remaining portion of our live today, I'm here. I'm here. I, 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 I speak to wives. I speak to girlfriends. I speak to husbands. I speak to first ladies. I speak to people who are having difficulty um, in life, life, handling life. I, I, I'm not calling myself a life coach, but I do feel like um, people come to me with um, certain situations and very often I'm able to help. So that's what I'm here for today. Um, if you have a question or you have a comment or you have a situation, even a prayer request, we have a prayer line on in our church. It's 24 hours a day. Um, you can text in a prayer request and we really pray. We have a whole prayer team and we pray. Uh, we call out your names. We call out your children's names. We come against sickness. We come against marital stress. We come against those things that are causing you to almost hit a wall. Um, prayer changes things. So we offer you prayer. This is just me today um, sharing um, what we offer to the community, what we offer to the world. Um, we pray for real. We intercede for real. It is not something that we um, just do. It is our lifestyle. Prayer is our lifestyle. Full Effect Gospel Ministries has prayer three times a day. Uh, corporate prayer on the phone, 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. And then we also have a prayer line where you can call 24 hours a day and get a live person to pray with you. It's most of the time it's Bishop McInnes himself, um, or, or he will answer a text, anything that you can um, think of. Thank you, Paulette. That's my youngest sister, Paulette Elliott. Thank you. She, she put in something very important. She wants me to touch on the importance of health and fitness. And those of you who know anything about me, I'm always on a health and fitness quest. I'm always trying to do the best that I can do to stay alive. Now, when we came up, when we came up back in Eden, we didn't have to do as much as we have to do now to stay fit because the only thing we had to eat were those things that grew from the ground and we lived, we ate a plant-based diet for the most part. Um, and then um, in other cultures, you see, they only eat meat for flavor. They eat a little bit of meat. It is only in the United States of America, I believe, that we eat um, 20 ounce steaks and all like that. And I'm not telling people what to eat, but what I am saying is we have to balance our eating uh, with our activities. And I have been good at... Um, um, changing my diet, switching to um, a plant-based diet, and, you know, really because of the inflammation. And I don't know a lot. I'm not one of those gurus, and I'm not one that's going to corner you and try to tell you what to eat. What I am saying is that for me, I was having a bout with rheumatoid arthritis where my hands would tighten up like this, and they would be so painful, and then my whole body would be in pain, sometimes unbelievable. I mean, I understood the term, your body racking with pain, right? Body racking with pain. I I, I suffered uh, a great deal of pain. And then, you know, after researching and after going on Healthy 7 and reading and watching What the Health and all these things on Netflix, I do my research. I realized that inflammation is a big problem. It causes a lot of pain. And inflammation comes from dairy products and it comes from meat products. So I tried it. I tried one time. I just stopped eating dairy and meat and uh, like a vegan 
And I say like a vegan because I didn't go around looking for stuff that just said vegan. I just eliminated meat and dairy from my um, diet and the pain went away. I was able to do this with my fingers and it didn't hurt. I woke up in the morning. My fingers weren't stuck like that anymore. I'm just talking about simple things like that. And when I eliminated that stuff from my diet, my eating habit, my um that arthritis pain went away. So, of course, uh, I did it for about a year, and then I went back. My sister cooks, man. She makes that curry chicken and them oxtails and all that, and I, I love it. So, I got off again, and I started eating badly again, and I started eating eggs and cheese and everything that I love. And I, I didn't die, but the pain started coming back, so I understood that this is really, really not good for me. You got to do what you got to do, but this didn't work for me. So when I eliminated uh, dairy and meat products from um, the majority of my meal, and my, my meals were majority or all uh, plant-based, then I felt better. So um, that was that was great, but that that fat wasn't going nowhere. Uh, you got to hit the pavement. You can you can do all of that. You lose a few inches or so, but if you want to lose weight, you got to do like Rosetta, a rosy serene on here. You got to go to that fitness gym and work your buns out. And I know we don't want to do that. We don't. We we want to take a pill. But the truth of the matter is, we got to hit the pavement. We got to walk. We got to do some kind of exercise. Got to get up out that chair. So um, that's really important, especially for those of us who are kingdom busy, kingdom busy like me. We travel from state to state, even country to country, up and down in the airport. I didn't get my jet yet. I wanted a helicopter and then Kobe died on a helicopter. So Bishop was like, you ain't getting no helicopter. There goes my helicopter. But anyway, I have to go to the airport. And, you know, if you're going to go to the airport, you better have your sneakers on because you always at gate number 39C somewhere and you you got to walk, 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 walk. This is good exercise. So, but when you're doing that and then you have to get off that plane and go minister, you have to be healthy. You have to be fit. You can't be um, wheezing and carrying on. So, um, that's very important that we take um, good care of our health. Anybody else? I hope that I helped you, Paulie. Those of you who um, uh, asked about health and fitness, um, that's just my take on it. I'm not an expert. I'm not, um, you know, a guru. I'm just me trying to trying to live my best life. So, um, anybody else? Two questions. I want to reach out to others about Christ. That's Netta May. Here it is. This is Facebook. Facebook is the quickest way to reach out to people about anything. And so, I, I encourage people to stop putting your personal business on Facebook. Nobody really cares what you have for breakfast or lunch. I'm telling you the truth. Nobody really cares what color your socks are, how cute you looked on Sunday. Sunday's off of church. I get it. Uh, but at least one of those posts should be one that reaches out to people about what is your core belief system. You need to talk about Jesus at least once in your post. And if you don't know what to say, copy somebody else's post that um, does something for you spiritually and post it. So that's a good way. Social media is a good way to um, to talk about Jesus and to introduce people to Christ. And don't be ashamed. You know, nobody else is. Everybody will everybody will corner you about what they want to talk about. So don't be afraid. Just talk. Let's talk about loss and separation of family. Thank you, Denise Wade. Loss and separation is something that's very sensitive. Once you lose a person in your life, Nobody can tell you how long your grieving process is, but we can tell you not to grieve too long. And only you know when too long is too long. When you have um, lost someone, you have to know what you know. You have to know what you believe. And what you do not know, you cannot know. You can't know what you do not know. I wonder if they went to heaven. I wonder if they went to hell. I wonder, I wonder. These things we don't know. So, you know, in alcoholism and substance abuse, they say accept the things you can change and the wisdom to, y'all know the serenity prayer. There are some things you cannot change. If somebody died, they're dead. They're already gone. You can miss them. You can cherish their memories. 
and you should. Every waking day of your life, you remember those that you lost and you remember the positive, the happy moments. You remember the funny times that you've had. And that's the benefit of being a human being as opposed to being an animal because we have recollective memory. We can recall. We are able to go back to moments in our lives and relive them. You have to be careful. We also have something called choice. You can choose what moments to remember. You can choose what moments to relive. And you can choose what moments you do not want to relive. You are the captain. You determine what you occupy your mind and your thoughts with. And so always filter it in with your faith. Your faith kicks in and it helps you and keeps you from being depressed. You must go against depression. You must go against sadness and you must embrace the joy of the Lord because it is our strength. V. Marie, how you doing, darling? Uh, the shame of looking backward. The shame. Uh, then uh, is that what we're asking about? The shame of looking backward. I don't understand. I need to. I need you to give me that question again, and I'll and I'll certainly deal with it. Thank you very much, Elder Hayes. I love you. Yes, right. Uh, Facebook is a platform for the minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You don't have to take a text, but you can certainly be a witness. Hey, David, good to see you. Well, I'm asking everyone who has a question, something that you want to. Um, me to talk about and you all can talk today i'm taking time to read uh your posts and your comments and i'm trying to deal with it as a matter of fact um i i, I would give you a phone number to call and we can have a call in um uh, if that's okay but I, i'm good with these questions right now let's 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 do the questions if you have a question or something you just want me to deal with we can do that um somebody is asking about getting me to come and preach at your church i'm just kidding nobody asked that <laughs> I'm just kidding. Nobody asked that. But people ask all the time. They they are messaging me. I love you guys, but I never really go to Messenger too much. So you're trying to get me to preach, and it's been a month since I've been on Messenger. I'm not going to see that. So Wanza's on here. Elder Wanza left, which is my administrator, and she will tell you how to get in touch with me for ministry requests, and she will be the liaison who you will speak to. You can also speak speak directly to me. I, I check the emails as well. One of us will respond to you in our email and our email address is full effect mail, M-A-I-L at AOL.com. So if you really know, seriously, people are always inboxing me, asking me uh, about ministry requests and, and I, I get them late. I really am late with my inbox. So it's uh, full effect mail at AOL.com. There's something that came across my desk. I'm going to inbox you with it. It's vital and serious. Then maybe you can do a real topic on it. David, don't inbox me. Email me. Email me. Email Healing Truth Women's Healing Truth 900 at gmail.com. Healing Truth 900 at gmail.com. I'm not going to be able, I probably will miss the inbox. That's it. Or, or, matter of fact, full effect mail at AOL.com. Either one of those will get back to you. I promise you that. Minister Hines, how do you handle your Christian co workers who are misrepresenting Christ without coming across holier than thou? You can't handle your Christian co-workers. You have to be the, the example that they are not being. You have to represent Christ. You have to represent Christ in such a way that it is overwhelming and overpowering those who are misrepresenting. You will do yourself an injustice trying to correct grown people. If, if I were you, I would let them live the way they live, but I would be a a sterling example of Jesus Christ, um, not just around them to others, but to them. When they uh, uh, offer you a part in their activity, kindly decline and say, I, I always say, I'm saved. I don't do that. So I, they call me holy. And now people just laugh because they make that out of a joke on these 
um, comedy shows now. I'm saved. You know, Brown, he go, I'm saved. It's funny, but that's my answer. I'm saved. I don't do that. I'm sorry. Y'all go ahead with that. You know, because that's my real lifestyle. So it's not holier than thou. I'm a, I live a holy life. So that's not a holier than thou uh, attitude. That's just a Cynthia McInnes attitude. That's who I am. And, and, and sometimes they need to see you uh, be you without you saying anything to them. I hope that I'm helping you, Tracy. If they see you be you, they can see God be God in you. And perhaps it will cause them to adjust their lifestyle. And remember, everybody comes from different teaching, uh, different environments. They're learning what Christianity looks like from another perspective. And you, it's not your job to correct them unless they go to your church if they're part of your ministry you can say something to them but if they're misrepresenting christ um you just make sure you represent christ i hope that i helped you there anyone else anyone else this is really good hi donna donna berry before you go off live, I like the prayer line number for my oldest son. So we have two prayer line numbers. Wanza, um, if you can put that prayer line number up on Instagram and Facebook. Wanza, are you, I see you. I see the email. Thank you, Wanza. Put the prayer, both prayer line numbers up because I don't want to misquote it and then or somebody write it and they they miswrite it. You know, sometimes we could be a little dyslexic. We say 347 and we write 374. So I just would like for somebody to see it. So we're going to put it up for you, Donna. And we're definitely going to be praying for your oldest son. So uh, one of the prayer line numbers, that's for three times a day, 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. It is 347-584-8707. And that's on Facebook. So we're going to get it on Instagram. 347-584-8707. There's another number that you can call that is 24 hours. 24 hours. And you can text or call in your prayer request. We're going to get that number up for you. That number is 347-453-0053. Four five three zero zero five three. That's twenty four seven prayer call center. You can text or call three times a day. Three four seven five eight four eight seven zero seven. Hey Chanel, I'm not gonna call you Nelly. I'm gonna call you Chanel. How are you, Ty? Tyshawn, how are you? Thank you guys for being on the live. Do you have any questions for me today? I know that I get on here and I just go zoom into my subject and I go right in and I talk, 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 talk about whatever the Lord puts on my heart. But today I want to hear from you. I want you to have an opportunity to, um, to, 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 either share or ask a question. I'm speaking on someone who uses the name of Christ and title as a covering after being of ill report and evil speech toward those who are not of the household of faith. Again, Minister Hines, you can take a shot if you want to at communicating with that person, but it is not your duty. Remember uh, that God is is real right we can talk to god about people without having a confrontation if you want to do it of course you're grown adult and you're a christian and you hold a mantle you can do it but i don't think it is your responsibility to correct people um because you would have to know you would have to know more about them than what they are actually doing or saying remember that people speak out of uh, uh a plethora of environmental accents. Things happen in people's lives that cause them to say what they say and do what they do. So before we correct them, at least befriend them and try to get an understanding of where they're coming from or what's happening or what they're being taught. And perhaps you get a better understanding. And if you do, if you get a better understanding, it will be a better conversation. That's just me. So again, I trust that that's helping someone. Anyone else? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking, um, Marcia Heard. I am doing well. Thank God. I am doing well. God bless you, Sister Hunter. Anyone else? Anyone else? 
I know if you have a subject that you want me to, um, you y'all know I ain't scared. So if you have a subject you want me to talk about, then I will pray about it and I will consider bringing that to my lunchtime live uh, meetings or conversation. I definitely want to be a help. I am just not on here. I'm not trying to make a name for myself. I think I got a name already. My name is Bishop McInnes's wife, and I'm good with that. I'm not trying to go uh, be famous or any of that. I am on here to help people um, get to another place in life that they uh, might be having a difficult time getting to. So here I am. I'm opening myself up. Thelma Bias. After many years of backsliding, disobedience to God, is it scripture to suffer rebuke as Paul did after his experience with Christ? I don't understand what suffer rebuke means. So, um, and I think that we might need to deal with what backsliding and disobedience to God means because they're certainly not the same. Disobedience to God is not backsliding. Backsliding is when you walk away from your faith. You no longer believe. And I don't think that most of the people who think they back uh, are a backslider are what they think they are. I think that they are what you have put in your uh, post disobedient to God. Baby, if everybody who disobeyed God was a backslider, we would all be just backsliders. Um, we all have reasons that we disobey God. Some of us do it unknowingly. Some of us are deliberate. Some of us take a shot like kids. They disobey their parents. They take a shot, but that does not, un um, that does not, um, remove them from the family. They still DNA. You can't you can't un DNA yourself. You cannot um um you're no long you're not disowned from the family because you disobeyed your parents. You're gonna get a beating for it. You get what you get when you do what you do, but you still family. So we gotta be careful about saying that because we disobey God we're a backslider. Backslider means I no longer believe. And that's why I always talk about uh, hypocrites. Hypocrites do what they don't believe. Um, I want you to make sure that you really believe because if you really believe, you will you will probably never stop believing. Uh, once you are a believer, you are always in the body of Christ. A backslider is somebody who lost their faith and stopped believing. And to that person, God is married to the backslider. So if you want to ask about suffering rebuke, uh, he's married to the backslider. That doesn't mean, you know, married means love and commitment and relationship. It's not about suffering and rebuke. It's not about pain and hurt. It's about love. And so he loves the backslider. Um, I have Chappelle Ingram. My question may be off topic, but I'm going to ask anyway. Well, I ain't got no topic today. We talking about what you talking about. I know we can't worry and pray at the same time, but I worry about my three sons who are incarcerated, especially when I receive bad news about them while they are in prison. I won't stop praying, but I want to stop worrying. Is that even possible? Of course it is possible. You must understand the difference between being concerned and worrying. Worrying means that you do not have any confidence in God, no faith at all that God will protect them. You only hope that they will be protected. Uh, being concerned is different from worrying. Now, um, when you're concerned, you're a mother. You can't help it. You can feel them. They're inside of you. They're, they're a part of you. So you're going to be concerned about their well-being. Worrying means that after I am concerned, I go to God in prayer and I put my faith, I have to light another fire under my faith. And nobody can just do that one time and that's it. You have to constantly reignite your faith. You have to constantly reignite your faith. And faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That's why you got to have the word constant in your life. The word is constantly communicating with you and it's keeping your faith on fire. The word of God keeps your faith fire lit so that no matter what you hear, you'll be concerned about it, but you won't worry because after you hear it, you place it in the hands of God and then you trust God. So, so 
So, so what you might be considering worrying might be just concern. If you're up all night, you can't sleep, you're walking around, you, you can't function, that means you do not have faith in God. You pray to God, you trust God, he's going to protect your children, and that's it. Um, and sometimes you got to keep on you have to keep on relighting your faith fire. I'm, I'm helping you too, Denise Wade. Good, good. And I know you're saying you're worried, but now worry takes um, concern to another level. Worry means that my hands are tied. There's nothing I can do and I cannot help him. So I am worried about what might happen to the, him. But that's different when you have faith. When you have faith in God, you're concerned about your son. You're concerned about your your son's well-being. But your faith kicks in and that's when you trust God. You cast your cares upon the water. You find it after many days. The Bible says, Put all of your trust in God and believe God. And if your faith is failing, it's because you have not put enough word in your life. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So that's why I don't listen to a whole lot of stuff all day long. I don't, I don't fill my spirit with a whole lot of stuff. I fill my spirit with the word of God because the word of God reignites my faith, especially when I feel my faith dwindling. I turn off that TV. I love TV. I'm a TV addict. I love movies. But let me tell you something. When I feel my faith dwindling, I turn the word of God on, on my iPad, on my phone, on my television, on, on my radio. I hear the word of God. Gospel music and the gospel preach will always reignite the flame of fire of your faith. Uh, Thelma, okay, after rededicating your life to God, is it scripture to suffer rebuke from the people of God? I don't know what you're talking about, Thelma. You need to stop that. And don't worry about suffering no rebuke from the people of God. Let the people of God live their own life and you live yours. You got to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You and Jesus got to work it out. And that's the way it should be. People rebuking you, you... you Listen, don't get me started suffering rebuke from the people of God. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm telling you right now, if you think it's okay for you to suffer rebuke, then go ahead and suffer rebuke. But I ain't suffering no rebuke from nobody who got um, the same DNA as me. We both human. We both go to God the same way. There's no veil. Uh, the veil of has been split down the middle. And now you don't have to go to God with a priest. You can go to God. Uh, for yourself. And that's uh, if that's what you mean by suffering rebuke of the people, we're going to stop that. We're going people, we're going to leave people alone. Stop rebuking people. Rebuke the devil. That's who we need to be rebuking. Around here rebuking people. If the if the person is acting like the devil, then they're being used by the devil. How about rebuke the devil and leave the people alone? One day we're going to get punched right in the face rebuking people. We need to leave people alone and let people work out their own soul salvation. Yeah, they, they will punch you in the face. And then you're going to be talking about, oh, I've been suffering for Christ's sake. No, you need to mind your business and stop bothering people about their own lifestyle. What they eat don't send you to the bathroom. I'm acting up. That's the real deal. I mean, people might rebuke you. Um, your leader might call you in and have to rebuke you about something. But I'm not talking about your leader, your past. I'm talking about people in the pew. Stop playing. We really need to stop worrying about that. We need to focus our attention on pleasing God. I got you, for, uh, Lady McCants. The doctor's on. Get the right focus. Thank you very much. Uh, we are all focused a lot. We we focus on people too much. Most of our posts are about people. Either, either our posts are about us or our posts are about people. I think we need to streamline some of those posts and do something to help somebody. And it doesn't always have to hurt to help. Some of us just got to be mean and because that makes us look big, bad, and bodacious because we around here being mean to people. Listen, ain't nobody going to always accept mean be nice i think that what i'm saying might be mean um sometime but i, I don't intend to be mean to anybody because i don't know who i'm talking about but when you know you're talking about and you say something mean you know throwing subs on facebook that's that's you know that's ridiculous amen so um this is true let people get it when they get it and just pray for them 
I got you, Chappelle. That's the idea. Somebody told me that a long time ago, and it bothers me. Thelma, I love you, but you need to forget about everything you heard a long time ago. Do you know people used to use wear Fred Bond shoes a long time ago? They don't wear Fred Bond shoes anymore. You know why? Because they went out of style. I need you to stop worrying about what happened years ago and start focusing on today. Yesterday is gone. Today is a new day. We're going to have to focus on you know, a fresh word from the Lord. He's the same God. He changes not, but he has a new method. This is a new day. If we live in the old days, we live in by traditions of old, we're going to miss a whole new revelation. We're going to be like Rip Van Winkle slept through a whole revelation, revolution. <laughs> he, he didn't get a revelation because he slept through a revolution. I want to make sure that we are in the present and we are in the now. Now faith is the substance of things so forth. Now faith. Let's worry about, not worry, let's think about focus, ready? Focus on now. Focus on the real enemy. Some need us not to respond to show care instead of anger. That's right. Don't even respond. Don't even let, let people know that you even heard what they said. They're up all night trying to figure out, did she read it? Did she see it? Did she, and you don't, they don't know. They don't know. Don't respond. Uh, here's uh, Minister Denise Green. We watch you work so diligently for the kingdom. Can you tell us how you balance your prayer life? wife through these family life and still be okay at the end of the day baby i'm glad you asked let me tell you something it's not um a superhero idea to do everything that you've been called to do rosa park said you never feel fear when you're doing the right thing and i never and the way i balance is that i understand that Everything that I do has one purpose. I put it all together as one purpose. I don't have, I have several different activities going on, but they all serve one purpose. And that is a kingdom purpose. Even while I'm teaching classes in my college classes, I teach classes so I, I can help people become better. That's a part of my kingdom responsibility. As I take care of the children, um, the, the the business that I'm in, that's a kingdom responsibility. In the middle of doing that, I have parents that I minister to, that I talk to. They come to our daycare. They stop in my office. Sometimes they're in here crying. I have to close the door because I do ministry all day, every day. And so that's my balance. I know I hear a lot of people saying you got to have balance because that's when they want to go and they want to do something else. And they say you gotta have balance. I don't have no something else in my life. I don't I don't I don't need I don't need to do these other things to consider it balance. Balance is being in the will of God for my life. And when I get tired, I stop and rest. That's for sure. I know when. I know when. To, me and Bishop will take a two-day vacation on a Tuesday and a Wednesday. We do what we gotta do. It's not that serious. We don't have to plan it out and have a, a week this day nine. we don't have to do that because we have structured our lives in such a way that we have liberty when we got three free days we'll uh jump on a plane and go to montego bay in a hot hop skipping a jump relax and then sometime even there we're working because work is not work when you're enjoying it, okay? I hope that you guys, I hope that helped you. Work is not work when you're enjoying it. I love what I do. Like Timony says, I love what I do and I love who I do it for. So that means that it's never too much. So all y'all feeling sorry for me, like, oh, poor child, she always doing something. Blah, blah. Please don't do that. I feel great. I'm fine. When I get sleepy and tired, I know how to go to bed. Amen. I hear you, Veronica, Lady Clark, the Lord, the Holy Spirit teaches us how to juggle and not be all over the place. That's, that's the real deal. He teaches, he, he, and, and, and you have to understand, um, you have to understand when it talks about balance, you have to understand how to be proactive and how to plan and how to, um, use time management effectively okay so i don't do a lot of things that other people do because i'm focusing on time management so only if i'm led of the lord i'll get on the phone and talk to you for half an hour only if i'm led of the lord i promise you that because i'm just not the 
chit chat kind of kind of chick. I'm not that one because I, I am busy. I like doing what I'm doing. But if you need me, I'm there. If you need me, I'm there. I'm going to do my best to be there for people because that's all one thing. But if you just want to vent and, you know, you just want to kind of waste my time, you're going to have a hard time with me. That's just the real deal. Elder Hayes, when you are diligent and the things of God and in ministry, God will reward you and give you the desires of your heart as well. Absolutely. God takes care of those who take care of his business. Amen. I got one purpose and that's kingdom purpose. And when you serve the Lord and you serve the kingdom, the kingdom rewards you. I'm not worried about finances. I'm not worried about money. I'm not worried about anything because the kingdom rewards every effort. I, I, like people say, people will take advantage of you. I can never be taken advantage of. I can give away everything that I have. People can take it from me, but I will not be taken advantage of because the Lord knows the way that I take. Anything that somebody takes from me, they must have needed it. They can have it because God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. He's been doing it for so long that you can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. I got a few more minutes. We got about 10 more minutes left. So, uh, hey, Robert Taylor, I wonder who that Robert Taylor is. I'm glad you're on here. Amen. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Anybody else? Time management. Time management. You know, some people around here really feeling sorry for us. I, I wouldn't be no first lady. Honey, you must be crazy. I'd never be a first lady. You got to be careful about what you might. I don't know what first lady you looking at. If she miserable and having a hard life, then she the wrong first lady. Because let me tell you something. I love my life. I love Jesus. I love the church. I love the people in the church and I love my husband. So we're doing all right. We're doing all right. And this after 22 years, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to that kind of foolery. You go ahead and say what you won't tolerate or you want to, but if given a chance, I know you would because the Lord takes care of them that are his. I, you cannot take care of God's business and he not take care of yours. What kind of father would he be? What kind of friend would he be? What kind of brother would he be if he let you do everything for him and he don't do nothing for you? Come on now. <laughs> Amen. You have to be fulfilled in your calling or it's not your calling. That's set lady McCants. I love it. You have to be fulfilled in your calling. If you're not fulfilled, it's not your calling. And you still got to do stuff that's not your calling. Um, but you got to find something that is your calling because when it's your calling, you will be fulfilled. And you won't be looking for new stuff every five minutes okay so like you know raising your kids may not be your calling but you still got to do it cleaning the house ain't no calling but you still got to do it or you live in filth those things you have to do but when you are called to something it fulfills you it gives you everything you need and you can't sleep until you get it done that's what a calling does so um it's my calling it's who i am thank you so much Okay, we still have a few more moments. Anybody else have a question? I like your questions, and I don't do this often, so here I am opening up. And usually when we do these talk sessions, it takes people a long time to get their question together. So I tried to ask you to start getting it together before we started. So if we go a little over time today, um, Instagram is going to cut me off, but Facebook and, and Periscope, we can go a little further if you have more questions or concerns and so um, I, I hope that I help the ladies with the sons who are incarcerated with that I want to say that we are still working on the Queens project the Queens inmate project I know we haven't done anything yet you haven't seen what we've done, but Healing Truth Women's Ministry is working on the Queen's Inmate Project. That means if you have a son or daughter that is in the system, we're going to send them a care package. We're going to start communicating with them and let them know that there's a life going on outside and people outside of their environment are praying for them. Some people... Uh, be losing their life trying to look for a life. Only what you do for Christ shall last. Amen. Amen. Thank God. You know, trying to lose their life, trying to get a life. See that? How about that? Hey, Ma, my mother said, I know that's your calling. <laughs> she knows because she, she knew me since the day I came out of the matrix. 
<laughs> thank God. Thank God. I love my mother and I love my sisters. And in case you want to know, I have four sisters and one brother. I had two brothers. One passed away. And he's always in our heart. So when you talk about loss, Everybody grieves differently. There are some of us, we have to keep their face in front of us. We have to keep their name in our mouth so that we um, can keep their memory fresh. I'm different. I got them. I got them here. Like I have Deacon Brian Wade and I have other people who, who, who I lost my dad and others. They're in my heart. And, and I thank God for my memory, my recall. Every now and then uh, a tear will come out my eye for joy or something my brother said to me, uh, something we say to each other or something like that. It helps me. It helps me to understand that death is a part of life and it's something we have to embrace. And we don't fight it. We just um, embrace it. And so um, I trust that um, that helps somebody who's dealing with loss in their life. Amen. When people are in your heart, they, 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 they're never gone. They're never gone. Uh, I don't get to see my brother who lives in North Carolina. I don't get to see him, but he's in my heart. So I see him every day in my mind, and I talk to him as often as I can. And to me, that's that's really good. That's really good that we're able to do that. God gave us that, and I will never replace it. He gave us better than FaceTime. He gave us better than a camera. He gave us a memory, and I praise God for that. Anyone else? Hey, Kay. Hey, hey, Santa. Good to see you guys. Question, questions, questions. And again, it, it, thanks, Mom. She said, I know my son is with Jesus. That that helps when you know what you know. But when you don't know, in no sense, you're worrying yourself to death about it because you don't know. You can't know what you don't know. But when you know it, you know it. Amen? And it helps. It helps you to deal with the pain sometime that comes from the memories. I love you, and it's great to see stability 25 years strong. Thank you for your sacrifice. You're qualified to work in this area of the vineyard. Thank you, Veronica Clark. I love you. We go way back to the day that I was uh, mm, new. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. So um, we're about three minutes left. I want. Oh, can you discuss? Here's Marquita. Can you discuss some practical ways we can increase our faith? I just discussed that, and I got it from the Bible. It says, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And I know that may not be practical. So putting that into practice is is um, deliberately, you, you, you have um, Bible plans on your on your phone, Bible plans on your laptop, on your computer, uh, increasing your faith, there's only one way, and that is to apply the Word of God to every situation. So here's a challenge to make it practical. Let's apply the Word of God to every challenge that we have, all right? So you face something where it looks like you can't do it. You don't have the ability to do it. Now you got the Word of God that says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So now I realize I I can't do it, but I'm taking the concept of having Christ with me into this project. I'm going to pray and God's going to give me insight and God's going to give me strategy and God's going to give me new information. He's going to let me see what I did not see because he's with me. He's going to give me the assistance that I need. I got that help from the word of God. The word of God tells me that I can and I agree with the word of God. So now I have to put that into practice and, and that can go all the way across the board. Any challenges that we face, we're able to face them by faith in the Word of God. And when we can't find a particular scripture, we can certainly find a story where somebody else was challenged with a similar challenge and how they handled it. The woman who had a daughter who was grievously vexed with a devil went to Jesus. 
interrupted a procession of Jesus and the disciples uh, and went to him and said, Master, O Lord, thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. So you might have a problem with your daughter. She may, You may not see it as being vexed with the devil. You may not, whatever her problem is, you can do intercession. Why? Because a woman from the coast of Tyre and Sidon did it in Matthew 15. Now I know that because I read the word of God. That encourages me to, to do that because I got it from the word of God. So that's a practical way to increase your faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Thank you so much, Gail. I love jumping on to see. I'm catching the live replay. It's good. But live is better. Thank God for you, Dr. Cynthia McKinnis. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Jonathan Small, God bless you. Good to see you on this live. I'm not going to be on here much longer because I can't be in here all day long, but I'm having a good time talking about what I'm talking about. Anybody else? Today is the day that I've opened up the live so that everybody can ask your questions and make your statements. I'm trying to read everything. Normally when I'm doing my live, I don't have time to read. I'm busy preaching and talking. So today I'm reading and I am enjoying your post and your comments. Thank you so much, sir. Apply the word of God to every challenge. You're welcome, Thelma. I appreciate you. Amen. We have some really, really great events coming up and I, I don't preach at everything and I'm not um, doing everything. I have some great women of God coming this Friday night. You want to meet me in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Bishop Jacqueline McCullough is going to be with us Friday night, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Just get, take the Holland Tunnel, get on 109, take that to the 78 West. Take 78 West all the way to Allentown and get off, um, any one of those exits, put it in GPS, you get there really quickly. And so easy run. Please come Friday night, Bishop Jacqueline McCullough, Saturday at, at 10 a.m. We're going to have breakfast at 11 o'clock. We're going to have the ultimate sit down. I need men of God. I need the men of God to face the women of God. We're going to talk about issues that are causing us to get divorces and causing us to walk away from a good thing and causing us to destroy our own families and leave our churches and mess up our ministry and all those things. We really going to get down and dirty with it. I'm not going to just have no conversation about leaving the toilet seat up. You I, you leave your toilet seat conversation at home. We really going to kick it. Kick the willy bobo. We going to really be talking about some real issues because we're going to get some some change. We need change because there's too much going on. It's too much going on. I see people failing, failing right in front of me. No teacher wants to see the student fail. A, a teacher who designs a test to make a student fail is not a teacher. That teacher is a dictator. And so I really want to see the people of God. I want to see your marriages work. I want to see your relationships work. I want to see your ministry work. I want to see you financial stable, financially stable in ministry and in life. I want to make sure that you are not suffering silently, that you're not a first lady hidden in the background because your husband is full of mess and you can't tell nobody. I want you to be able to live that through and walk that through and make a decision if you need to. I want to be able to help you. I want to be able to help the pastor who is suffering and doesn't understand why his ministry is not going anywhere further than it has gone. And he's looking around at other ministries, little idiots running around doing stuff, crazy stuff, and they're successful with it. And you've been doing your down home good preaching and you've been handling it and it's not growing for you. Let me help you. Let Full Effect help you. We can help you. And so, um, we I don't know if you guys know or not, but Bishop McGinnis will launch the Full Effect Global Alliance on March 28th or 29th, the end of the month. Uh, Bishop McGinnis will launch the Full Effect Global Alliance. And an alliance is set up to come together and empower one another. So it's something you might want to consider. Uh, Bishop Jacqueline McCullough is a ball of fire for God. That's right. So we want to be there. Now that's Friday, that 11 o'clock, we're going to do that sit down. Then three o'clock, if there's anything left, I'm going to preach the best I can on Saturday afternoon uh, around 3 o'clock, and it's going to be phenomenal. Then Sunday, Sunday, all day long, we're going to be having ministry. Elder Leftwich is going to be preaching in Brooklyn. Uh, 
Pastor Wallace, Overseer Designate Wallace, will be preaching in Pennsylvania. Pastor Ophelia Ray will be preaching in North Carolina. Minister Linda Stallings will be preaching in our New Jersey church. And Lady Alicia uh, uh, Kears will be ministering as well and leading uh, in that effort. Uh, we have a lot going on, and it's going to be phenomenal. In the afternoon, all of those ministries are going to come together. Our Portmore, Jamaica family will be with us on Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday. It's going to be phenomenal. They, we flew them in, get girls from the Portmore more project. They're coming in. We're picking them up from the airport on Thursday night. It's going to be phenomenal. So all of our ministries will be together on Sunday evening at 5 p.m. We're going to squeeze in 900 New Lights Avenue because we'll be in Pennsylvania Friday and Saturday. But Sunday... First come, first serve. You come in, stand up, sit on the side, sit in the pulpit, sit in the corner, sit downstairs, be outside. The weather's going to be nice. It's going to be packed in there. So uh, uh, Elder Marissa Farrow is going to be preaching. So all her friends and um, well wishes and fans are going to be there. So uh, I don't know where we're going to fit all these people, but we're going to make it work in Jesus' name. I just want you to try to get there, get there early so you can have a seat. Little girl, I love you so much. I'm blessed to know you. That's my mother. You know, I love Mother J. Everybody say hi to Mother J. Throw some hearts up for Mother J. April, April the first Friday in April, April 4th, we're going to be celebrating Mother Johnson's 80th birthday. We're going to have an 80th birthday celebration for my mom, Mother Mary Johnson, at 900 New Lots Avenue. you certainly welcome and invited. We didn't do the flyer yet, but we're going to do that. We got a lot going on. Tomorrow night, girls. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. You ain't doing nothing on no Tuesday night. So come tomorrow night for our pre-WWC. WWWC is going to be tomorrow night at 900 New Lots Avenue. I want you to come and help us do the final fundraiser for WWWC20. And I know when I say fundraiser, you think I'm going to ask you for $100. Well, I am going to ask you for $100. But if you don't have $100, I'm not going to beat you up. All I want you to do is be there, and I want you to give whatever you can give when we do the offering. But if you don't have anything, just come, let's shout, let's celebrate, let's get the atmosphere going for WWWC 20, 2020. I look forward to seeing all of you this weekend. If you can come tomorrow night, I'll see you there. V. Marie, I'm looking for you. I'll see you there. I love you guys. I'm out of here. I'm out of five. I love you. My live is over. I got stuff to do. See y'all soon. Bye-bye now.